Yes, we're recording. Hello. We're live. Well, we're not live, but we're we're kind of live. We um, we're live. Let's proceed. <laughs> How you doing, Sam? <laughs> I'm very good, mate. You all right? Yes, I'm well. I'm well. Um, I just uh, I've got about twenty minutes left of uh, the Hermit of Trague episode that we did, and. Um, I just, I really wanted to do like a bit of an intro for it just because. Um, it was all over the place, really, were <laughs> he's, he's a little bit. Um, yeah. And it's. I, well, I, I don't mean that disrespectfully. What I mean no. is it's completely different to our normal podcast. Yes, it, it is. Like, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but do you know what I loved about it? Like, for people that don't know, um, there's a documentary of his on BBC iPlayer. And it's won lots of awards, hasn't it? And just yes. by pure coincidence, the producers turned up randomly at the same time as we did do our podcast with him, yeah. which was really nice to be able to meet them as well, I think, because I think they've done a fantastic job with that. Yeah. with that. It's, It generally is. Um, it's brilliant. I mean, that's, that's fantastic. I just, I found myself, even listening to it back, I found myself just really um, very fond of the bloke. Do you know what I mean? I am. Do, do you know what? I've, I've since I've been back from Scotland, I keep thinking about him. Just like I wonder what he's doing now. I wonder, yeah, you know what I mean? he's, he's, he really is a treasure, and I think um, he, he's someone. And I'll, yeah, there's no doubt in my mind. Obviously, Lizzie, who's um, she's in the episode, and uh, she shows him some videos from some film festivals that she's taken the documentary to, and that's been successful and. People yeah, are, she, pe- people respond in such a positive manner to it, but I'm I'm not surprised because uh, no. he, he's just amazing. I think he's such I've an watched, in- interesting bloke. I watched the documentary before we went to Scotland. We wanted to watch it again, didn't we? But there was we were having a problem with the BBC up there. We wanted to watch it again. That was the plan to refresh. But I've watched it three times since I've been back as well, two or twice, something like really? that. But I love it. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> How many times? Twice, twice or three times. So. <laughs> but yeah, I just think it's brilliant. Yeah, he's um, uh, you know, and I, I, I've, I've edited the bits out that he he didn't want in. He was um quite specific about some parts that he spoke about that I've taken out. Um, but just just for listeners, I mean, it's um, the the audio is decent, so you you can hear him. But there's uh, so where we were sat. We're right next to his um, wood burner, which is as like an open log burner that's right there, sat in front of us, and it's obviously uh, that's crackling away. And there's you know there's multiple people in the room, so it was obviously um, yourself, me, um, Mark, and Rob who all went. Um, Harry, who's there for most of the first half of it, and um, Lizzie, who was the director and creator of the documentary. Plus and a couple do you know of... what? I love how much them two have bonded as well. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, you can tell that them two have grown through the process they've done with that. And that, and there there was a connection between them two, and she was very protective over them. Uh, yeah, was... absolutely no doubt about it. She, um, yeah, no, she, they've, they've got an incredible bond, and um, it's lovely to be around that, really. And it was, it was nice to be able to meet Lizzie as well. Um, yeah. So Lizzie's there, and a couple of her friends are there. So it's quite a kind of jam-packed group. Yeah. Um, we've also, for like the first sort of quarter of the episode, you can also hear Lizzie's dog like barking yeah. out, outside in the forest. It's not too distracting, but if you do hear that, that is Lizzie's dog. The dog was <laughs> absolutely fine. Yeah. Uh, Liz, Lizzie went and took the dog away, and that, that was absolutely fine. She she left about uh, about about a third of the way in. It's not your average podcast, what we're trying no. to say, but it. He's not your average bloke, and no. and he is a, a true true inspiration. But the best thing about sitting down with him, and I, and I got that from from um, watching it the first time, is just what a kind hearted bloke he is as well. Do you know what I mean? I yeah. I really sent, felt a warmth from him, and he's got a cracking sense of humour as well. I yeah, think. he does. Yeah, he's yeah. um. I kept in. I actually highlighted a little bit. I'll probably put it in the preview, but um, the bit where he just he totally mugged me off. And yeah. uh, and listen, listen to the back. I was just, I just said I was like, oh, he's done me there. I've got to leave that in. But I was like, as I asked him about um what he does for food out there, and he, there was like this long pause, and he just went, "Well, I eat it." 
<laughs> it just, I was just like, oh, yeah. for fuck's sake, I've been done. Um, but yeah, he's. He, I think he mugged me off a couple of times. In yes, it as well, he is. We yeah. Had good, we had, we had good banter, though, with him. Yeah. We went after we stopped recording. We hung around with him for a bit and spent some time with him, didn't we? And we, yeah. we went and collected wood and that with him and got to know him a bit better. And I was actually quite sad when we were leaving. You know, I get quite emotional anyway, don't I, Jack, with anything? But when we were leaving him there, I was just thinking, might never get the chance to um, to yeah. speak. Yeah, no, I just thought, oh, I hope I get another chance if we were up ever up that end again to sit down and have a cup of coffee with him. Or gravy, which I'm pretty sure it was gravy, not coffee, that we were drinking. <laughs> was it really? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I didn't want to say anything to him at the time. <laughs> uh, he's so he's such a treasure. I, I genuinely that's that's how I've just you know people that I've spoke to about him since we've been back. I, that's that's what I refer to. I, I, you know, he is a treasure, and I I, he, I think he's someone who needs to be protected, and um, you know, yeah. just. Yeah, his way of life and the you know the stories that he's got, his his writings, his journals are just mm. um, they're quite there's something quite special. And um, I really hope we we do him justice with the you know the small amount of time that we had with him. Um, yeah, he, he, I think as well. What's nice about this story is he's been so independent yeah. for so long, and then he fell ill, and and um, a. a a really good group of kind-hearted people have mucked in to help him, yeah. and you can tell how appreciate appreciative appreciate. You can tell he appreciates it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, no, and um, you know what's interesting. I think quite often, yeah, you know, we talk about mental health and how um, quite often when people isolate themselves, that's almost in a negative manner. But I think with Ken, like, I, I mean, although when he, you know, he comes back from Canada and um, he's told that his mum and dad have passed away, so he's got nothing. Um, and he's obviously forced into this isolation, but it, it just, he's made it his own. Like he, he, in no way do I feel like he's negatively been affected no. by this. Like his, his way of life is, is, I think it's amazing what he's built and what he's created yeah. there. Um, and you know, that's like even even when we asked him about whether he feels overwhelmed like by visitors and stuff, he loves it. Like he absolutely yeah. loves he loves yeah. to talk. He loves um to share his story. He loves to talk to yeah. people. And you know, he, he asked us questions sort of as we got further into the interview. And um, he's he's just a brilliant bloke. He really is. Yeah. Um, and he's the sort of bloke that whatever happens in his day, he'll just tackle there and then, isn't he? Like, and he'll just. Just he just completely goes with the flow. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. Just no. completely goes with the flow, and that was an amazing, we amazing drive down to him, and then we hiked back um, to where we were staying after that. Yeah, and just surrounded by that scenery, he was like walking around in an art just, painting. Yeah, just um, a, a, such a stunning place. You know, he's he's right on the on the banks of Loch Traig, and you've got multiple Munros all around him. Um, yeah. Just stunning, and uh, it was about a four-mile walk from his back to the Corral Station. Um, mm. it's, it's, yeah, it's great. We had a really good time up there, but that's what the next episode will be about. We'll have a debrief and and chat about yeah. what, what we got up to and um, our epic adventure. I I asked Ken if he was ever, if he'd ever done Ben Nevis. And he said, "Why the hell would you want to do that? It's full of tourists." Yeah, it, I just and I listened to the bit when we we talked to him about um doing the cold water therapy and whatnot, and uh, he he, <laughs> he mugged you off and said, "Yeah, I think you probably need a brain transplant, although it'd probably be rejected." <laughs> he's he's yeah. just yeah, he's such a character, and um, I, I love I loved every minute we spent with him yeah. when we when we went for that little walk as well. Uh, he was just picking up them sacks of, of logs and whacking oh, them on his nothing. shop like it was nothing. And he, he, I was just in awe of the bloke, really. Like, And I've told me kids about him, told me family about him, and, and I'll be telling people about him for many years to come, I think. Definitely. No doubt about it. I can man. see why that documentary has done so well. And, it, and a lot of it is because of how well it was put together. Mm-hmm. But his his character as well, and and the bond them two both made making it, and and which we were lucky enough to see firsthand as well. Yeah, absolutely, so, mate. Absolutely. Yeah. 
um, she's just come back from the Ukraine and Canada, I believe, and they've won awards for the documentary in both both places. And we got to see her showing, like the Ukrainian people sent him a video, didn't they? Yeah. And, and yeah. they were like saying hello to him via this video, and that it was just a really awesome, awesome. Yeah, it's the only word for it, really, isn't it? Very it is awesome amazing. experience. Yeah. Yeah, it really was. Um, so please enjoy this uh, excellent interview that we did. Uh, like I say, it is a little bit kind of clunky. Um, Ken kept getting up and having to go and get letters and um, things that he wanted to show us and getting up and moving around. So it's it's, it's a little bit stop and start, but um, it is, it's Ken. And that's 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 yeah. that's all I can really describe it as. So, um, so please enjoy. Uh, as always, like and like and subscribe. YouTube, Spotify, um, follow us on Instagram. Sam is dare underscore two underscore dip, and I am Jackie Boy Shep. Um, <laughs> hello, <laughs> and uh, and yeah. So um, yeah, enjoy the episode. And watch the documentary on BBC iPlayer. Yes, BBC iPlayer, Hermit of Trague. Fantastic documentary. Enjoy. Peace out. So that's that. And they're, they're sending the trophy in the post because I had to leave, but um, well, I'll bring it up when you that were, happens. You were, They've been going through through some stuff lately as well, so for you to give them some happiness is amazing. Yeah, really, yeah. really nice. Nice story. It, it seems that uh, if they see somebody else that is probably uh, as, as worse as them, that's when it hits them, isn't it? Yeah. Because they think it, they're the only ones in the world that's having the trouble. Yeah. But it's uh, it can go both ways. Yeah, that's it. Mm. Yeah. Oh, did you hear that's it? one more. This is on Tyree. It's where, not as exotic, but where's this one from? <laughs> the Isle of Tyree. The Isle of Tyree. <laughs> I don't know if you want to clap or wave or whatever. <laughs> 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 yeah. Everyone loved it. Lizzie. <laughs> Is Lizzie, sorry. Yeah, that I've been there. Uh, I had to go back in hospital. Then. So the first time I was there, remember, which was maybe July. That's my dog. <laughs> uh, I don't know how long um, it is. Uh, three to uh, uh, four weeks, I suppose. But I, I think I heard you another, that you've been in another time. I felt all right when I got to, uh, uh, got up, and. Uh, I thought my uh, uh, bottom was acting up again, uh, but, but it was. But it, it was. It was all this blood coming out of my backside, Jeez. and so uh, b because I'd had cancer before, I thought to myself, oh, "Don't say cancer's returned." Mm. So I, uh, so I thought, right, I, I'm off, and I, I, I walked it down uh, railway line onto the main road, and who gave me a lift but this lady who had done the last film. Ah. And she was, uh, and her uh, boyfriend was a doctor at uh, uh, where I was going to. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he was on. Uh, he was speaking to her, her on the phone when she turned the corner and saw me walking down. And so she she says uh, uh, to him, "Oh, this Ken in front. I'm going to give him a lift." <laughs> and he and he said uh, he, he'd been speaking to her, uh, uh, and he said that. Uh, when he was treating me in hospital, he, he said he, he didn't uh, uh, mention this to me, but he, as you lot are, uh, very moved w about the film. Mm. Mm, yeah. And so it keeps on going, eh? Yeah. <laughs> but when when I did get to hospital, though, uh, it, it wasn't uh, 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 cancer. Well, it was a cancer, actually, but uh, the, the form little nodules inside your intestines okay. and so they have to uh, re uh, remove uh, remove them uh, and so I went through the usual procedure and uh, put, put me to sleep and removed them. I think I've wrote about it somewhere, I've, I've got to post the letter yet. Was this when you went into hospital recently, Ken? Yeah. 
And they put you to sleep and you removed the yeah, I went in the other day. Uh, I'll give you a, an idea of, the, of of what happened. I'm sending this to uh, my uh, le nephew, Richard. Dear Richard and clan, I was hospitalised again on the 1st of August and instantly from the time out of bed and heading for town, I couldn't wash my bottom. <laughs> Let's get this. I can hardly see it. It's all in darkness. I couldn't see it, and the lady gave me a lift to Belford Hospital where I stayed a while. Two days on the drip, two days no food, and I was starving. These days, due to past experiences, the hospitals have mixed words, for when you lie there in illness, no ma matter how you feel, if a wench is ill up opposite side in the ward, you tend to look after yourself and when she throws over the newspaper the next thing is you sit side by side showing pictures of the Instagram it's all good <laughs> cure for illness but then in they came dressed in grey garments Mr Smith and she shot away like a flash of lightning back to her bed you're not supposed to, uh, to be about a foot away from each other you've got to be a, uh, seven foot isn't it? <laughs> and they wheeled me away to the chopping block. It was late evening, so I didn't wake, wake up conscious until next day. They fed a cable inside me, pulling out nodules. Not serious, but nauseating. They are, they are cancerous, but can't kill you. Don't ever catch cancer, but I'm fine. Because, I wondered what that noise was. Because of drip feed for such a long while, I was famished and nurses came round with two slices of toast next to the menu for dinner and what I ordered was so huge they said I wouldn't eat it. Its date was 4th of August and I had ordered fish, a full plate, uh, plate of veg, chips, spuds, mayonnaise, cartons of fruit, carrots, a carton of ham, two slices of buttered bread, two cartons of fruit, two bananas, an apple, <laughs> bowl of soup, then we went on to phase two, but can't remember what that was. <laughs> I scoffed the lot. That, that, that's through being uh, uh, drained of your food and just fed water all yeah. while it gets you hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I, was away weekly soft, <laughs> <laughs> I was away from home a long while, but the estate came in and ran me home, but they'd been at the gun show. So reaching me in hospital was late. We travelled back on the 40 mile journey in the quickening dimness and su of summertime at light and stood at wood end in darkness. Good news for you, I'm becoming famous again and they arrived my cabin late last night to discuss a contract which I signed. Macmillan Publishers, any of you heard of them? It's yeah. Macmillan. Yeah. Macmillan Publishers, International Limited, Lime Tree Way, and, and this happened instantly. Uh, they paid me two inserts into my bank account, £2,750.50p, £2,750.15p, and I went into town to spend a lot. <laughs> 1500 to Mike, who was making a lot of brew for me. This is how they pay me for publication of all them uh, diaries. I wrote from the age of four until the age I am now, 75 in 58 days time. It's a strange, <laughs> it's so strange when only 15 days ago I walked seven miles without sanitary bowel, uh, towels and today I'm told I'm 2,750 pound, 2,715 pound richer <laughs> and my arse is dry. <laughs> 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 Payment will be fed into my account every two months until the book proves of no interest. This hardback book will be on the market sometime in May, also paperback, but may be on the internet now. Don't know. Don't ever become rich, as there's always a knocking at your door and you've a garden to plant. VTI, that bug I had, you don't realise you are ill. 
but when you do, it sends you to your maker. And nurse has said to me, or asking for, for information, did I have that long tunnel of light before me that I would travel down before recovering? And yeah, I did. So that's as far as I've got with Lefty. <laughs> Who are you writing to? Your nephew, did you say? Eh? Your nephew, that's all, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Where do they live? Uh, down in uh, uh, Derbyshire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant. <laughs> and uh, so the man that's writing the book, Will, is he, if you enjoyed his company? So, yeah. Will that's writing the book. Yeah, it goes well. Why? He's, he's nice, isn't he? Though, is he, have you enjoyed his company? Uh, the, yeah, the writer. Yeah, it, it, you know that other one that comes here. You, yeah. you maybe uh, don't uh, uh, know about him, but he turned up about ten years ago, and he says, I'd, "I'd like to write a story about you." Uh, so ten years ago, I says, "Yeah, that's all right." So ten years has gone. And he'd been along at uh, uh, David's uh, uh, tent, and he'd, he'd asked him as well. It was David that sent him round here. So he uh, is here, and uh, he said, "All I want to do is take six pictures." And he says, "I'm going round all the isolated farms and things at this. All I want is six people, uh, six pictures. It's not that now." Uh, all, all, all he, had, well, that's all he asked for. But he comes here now all the time with with his camera filming, and I've just and and uh, uh, Davy says to him when he keeps going trim. Look, you said you was only taking six pictures, and he, I, you're delaying me work. He says, and he was trying to erect his tent up there or something. He said, here's me trying to work, and all you're saying is with your camera, that's brilliant, that's brilliant, let me take a picture of that. Mm -hmm. And it's all movies, you know, that he's taking, mm -hmm. and it's, it's getting into a blooming great big long film. <laughs> and, and Is this this Elliot guy? I think that, yeah. Are you talking about Elliot? I think that's his name, uh, and, and he's going slightly thin on top. You can see... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. with dark mm -hmm. hair. Yeah. Yeah. And I so don't like his back. character at all. Mm. He, he, co he comes in here and is, is asking uh, questions. It's non-stop questions, and before you've answered the question, he's give you the answer, if you know yeah. what I mean. Uh, he'll say to you, are you going shopping tomorrow? Oh, well, when do you go shopping tomorrow? Will you, get, uh, will you do this? Uh, that sort of thing. We've got Ken here today. <laughs> where, uh, where are we, Ken? <laughs> what was I talking about then? Uh, you kind of forgot. This this cabin that we're in now, you you built all this yourself, didn't you? Yeah, every little bit of it, every yeah. bit of nail, and yeah. Yeah, the the is this where you've always lived, or you lived no, in? You've been down this. Hey, you'll have to go and uh, photograph the far end in the, where my old cabin was. Yeah, we can Lizzie do that. knows where it is. Yeah. yeah. How long ago was you in the in the old cabin? Built it in 1983, and uh, it got burnt down six years later. Who, who burnt that then? Well, there's a big long story to that, but. Uh, Do you want to tell it? it? You don't have to, <laughs> it's up to you. You must, you must not say anything about this. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, because this is top secret with the police. Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that won't be recorded. Yeah, yeah. perhaps we, yeah, we've, we've got, 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 yeah, we've got that. You <laughs> don't have to I, tell I, that. I'll yeah. tell you that I had this huge explosion. It's a good job you weren't in it then. Yeah. Mm. It was petrol cans blowing up. Really? Anyway, that was a bad time. So you, the cabins that you built before, what year did you build them and come down here? Well I did mention it already, it was uh, the 19, 1982 uh, I built it at the yeah. far end. And, and, um, it bent down six years later. Six years later. Right. And then you moved up here. And then you've moved to where we're at now. Well, I had to build this, yeah. I set about building this. And how long did it take you to build this that we're in now? Well, to start with, uh, 
if you add it all up, it was only six weeks. But it, because uh, uh, it, what I actually did was I'd come down at weekends uh, one day because I, I was doing stalking. I'd, I'd just come down for uh, for one day. I'd do as much work as I could. Then I'd mar march back. So there was only one day every week that I could come down. And uh, the logs that I'd already uh, got here, I could, uh, it would have been, if I'd uh, uh, had spare time, I could have built it within six weeks because I got my timber and sheeting and everything. It would only take me six weeks. But instead, it, it took me, uh, oh, I don't know, it would be uh, about two thirds of a year mm. before I got uh, just its shell up because yeah. it's built on stilts. And you've been out, and you've been here for over forty years now, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. It is beautiful. You can't. You, I want to explain it to the people that are listening what mm. what it's like, but you're better explaining stuff than me, Jack. <laughs> I'll just pass it over to me. Yeah. Um, no, no, no. I was just. It was amazing. We were just walking in, and all of a sudden, we just saw sort of the the, the, the outline of the of where you are here, and then as we come closer, we cross the fence and. It just, yeah, kind of uh, blows you away, doesn't it? It does a bit, yeah. It's just when we're driving amazing. down, Harry drove us down there, and it's like being in a painting almost. It's what? Like being inside a painting almost. It's so beautiful, the scenery and everything, <laughs> <laughs> the mountains and the trees, and yeah, then the Munros around me. Yeah, mm. and then you just come uh, in the middle of nowhere. Your little cabin pops you up, and you've got a beautiful in, garden. You've got to see it in winter, though. It gets real vicious. Yeah, I bet it does. Does this? I suppose this is the only thing here, the fireplace, that keeps you warm, is it? Yeah, this is a new thing and it's uh, not very good. No? I, I need to do something different about it. Look inside it, it I've only had it now about half a year. Yeah. So look inside, see all the cracks where it's yeah. split. Oh, yeah. Back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where did you get it from? Uh, I don't know the name of the firm, but I asked the estate to get it. But it turned out to be... Uh, uh, it only uh, y you couldn't cook on it. Yeah. Uh, so what uh, I did, uh, I had to uh, had to take out all these things that there was uh, inside it, sh sheets of stuff uh, like uh, thick asbestos that's inside, and b because it's such a cold fire. Yeah. Uh, all the my old stove, w which is just outside actually. That gave its heat to every part of the cabin. Yeah. Uh, it had nothing inside it uh, like uh, asbestos. This has got asbestos, this had in asbestos inside it, and it keeps the heat in, mm. uh, not letting it come into the room. Mm. Uh, and the other, other one, I don't know if Lizzie had ever uh, seen it at a time, when it got real hot in here. Yeah. <laughs> it went over a hundred. Really? Yeah, <laughs> but uh, that's outside now, and I've got, I've got this. Uh, I don't think this will last long. No, I have to get something. It's else already always. cracking up. It, it's. I think it's made of uh, 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 some uh, cast iron, and the heat just cracks it open. I bet they just make fires to look pretty these days, and not to actually. Yeah, yeah that's it. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, because well, this is an old way, old-fashioned way of living, isn't it? it, it um, well, this, this is a modern uh, mm. uh, way of doing modern, the old Yeah, style. this is a modern fire yeah. for, a, fire for a not stuff. doing the job for what it needs. Yeah, yeah. yeah you've We've got... got th this is Lizzie here. You've done the documentary, didn't you? Yeah. Um, what, what year did you do that? It's on BBC iPlayer, if people want to... Uh, it came out this year in spring, or the, there's a version I iPlayer that came yeah. out in last year. Over, and it's winning awards and everything now, yeah. isn't it? You're just showing Ken as we got here. Um, you've been over to the Ukraine where it's won something. Yeah. How what many awards that? did you say it's won? <laughs> <laughs> just two yeah. so far, Ken. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm sure you'll get plenty more from it. <laughs> other news is that it's going to Canada soon. <coughs> Sorry? It's going to Canada soon <coughs> and America. Well, I miss so you'll get more fans then. Yeah, you're going to be world famous before you know it. <laughs> like we watched it, we come up here um, not so long ago and done a little Monroe with, with um, 
with Harry. Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it's Harry. Yeah. 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 And, and we, we went for a little walk, and he was telling us about you then. And then we got, we got back. We live in Suffolk. Come, we went back and watched your documentary, and I, that's why I got him to speak to you and see if we can <coughs> have a chat with you because. I found it very inspiring, and uh, what I liked as well was your was your sense of humour as well while we were watching it. <laughs> you got to see the letters I've got through. That. Yeah, Harry was telling me about them. He's <laughs> replying to people, aren't you, Harry? Did you say you were going to do something with them letters? So I gave them to Will. You know, Will from Wales, the one that's writing the book. Yeah. I gave them to him, and I mentioned about potentially passing that task on to Livy just because I work quite long hours during the day and I don't really yeah. have time to do it, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. How many letters are we talking about? Like, there's a few hundreds. <laughs> but, but is it from people all over the world, then? Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. That's how many people you've inspired. Yeah. There's two from Siberia. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> well, how does that make you feel? Uh, just normal. Just yeah, normal. <laughs> just an average day. Yeah. <laughs> average day for you, Ken. <laughs> get, get a lot letters. of people, um, well, they'd feel different, but... Uh, Seems, uh, well, well, uh, with all, it does add to my work actually. But yeah. uh, all I do every day is uh, go out and get my wood in, and I'll be doing that until uh, uh, the cold weather comes in. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Can you uh, to most people, like I was reading the paper t today, and all it's uh, it's about is all these stars and what they do. They're going out sunbathing and. Yeah. and uh, <laughs> Yeah, you don't get to do that much up here, have <laughs> <laughs> And they're going out uh, beating up the cameraman uh, yeah. because they don't want filming. Yeah, <laughs> that'll be that'll be you. So, no, <laughs> 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 Can you see why people get inspired by you, or do you not know what all the fuss is about? <laughs> well, just like you lot that's coming here, it make, makes no difference to me. Yeah, yeah. So you're going to put it in what? We we do a podcast called it's called Dare it's to it's Talk. On radio. It, it's it's like a radio thing. It's there's a thing called Spotify where you record it first, like we're doing now, and then you put it onto this platform, and then people can who follow the channel can uh, go and listen to it. Then people can have it on their mobile phones. I think they'll find it very interesting, the, 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 like they did with your with your um, documentary. Yeah. It's very fascinating the way you choose to live your life. Some of the letters uh, that I got, though, uh, uh, and I've uh, I've read them all, of course, yeah. and they all say the same thing. Uh, so some of them they, uh, they say very inspiring. And yeah, like yeah, that. <laughs> yeah. And that's what we with our channel. That's what we like to do, inspire people. And and we were very inspired by the story, mm, weren't we? Definitely. Like, while yeah. I'm at it, all these that are sitting down. While he's speaking, you'll be able to read some of them. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you put them back in the same envelope, though. Yeah. I've had uh, over a hundred letters. I can't just nah, sit down and write a yeah. hundred letters. Yeah. Not only that, it's not as e it's not like you got a post box outside either, is it? <laughs> That's another thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I think the, the why the the film was so successful is because of what a, a character you are. You're you you're a very well liked character. I think this is why he's made so. it. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, what made you choose this way of life, if you don't mind me asking? Because I went touring the world. Yeah. And uh, I was up in uh, Alaska, Northwest ter Territories, and uh, Beaufort Sea, Arctic Ocean, and all them places, and people couldn't contact me. Yeah. So when I got back home, uh, they met me at the uh, airport to tell me my mum and dad had died. Right. Uh, and so I, uh, uh, they can't keep the house. Yeah. It was a council house. Uh, uh, that's when I hit the road. No, uh, uh, that's when I went back abroad. Mm. And then when I returned uh, uh, another two years later, uh, I knew I hadn't got a home to go to. Uh, mm. So I just. Did. Uh, when you not money decision. left. I, th I thought I'll do another two-year rambling. Yeah. Where did the skill come from to be able to make all this sort of thing? Then did you teach yourself, or was you taught it? Canada. Canada. Yeah. It's all built like that. Very little brick brickwork out in the Northwest Territories. Yeah. It's isolated. Mm. So very little concrete in and brickwork out there. Mm. It's all built like this. And that's where you learnt to do yeah. it, was it? Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Do you want to read us one of your letters out? Uh, yeah, just pick one and yeah. read it. 
there's a lot of them that uh, are religious no. things. They've wrote when I was walking through, uh, uh, when I was nearly, uh, 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 when I was dying, and all you could see is like looking through a white tunnel. Yeah. And uh, a lot of them, it's 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 got these Jehovah's Witnesses to write up saying uh, uh, you're going into everlasting life. But of course, the nurses told me uh, uh, very different. To yeah. That. Uh, w what it is, uh, uh, when you're dying like that, it's your brain shutting down. Right. And uh, that gives you the image as though you're looking through a pipe. Right. And all these uh, uh, other people uh, uh, think, oh, it's uh, it's going into everlasting life. Yeah. And so you get some of them where they're writing down, and it's wrote down in gospel, such and such. And yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> so, you've you've had a few problems with with your health lately, haven't you? Do you mind talking about that? Or? This is. Not all the times I've been in hospital, but yeah. uh, I'm doing quite a collection of them. <laughs> you keep all the bands. You've kept all your bands. You have these uh, uh, wrapped on your uh, wrist. Uh, yeah. When you in there. Uh, what are all these for then? Uh, th they've got your number on them mm. and, and, your, and your name. And when you go into hospital, you've got to have these strap, yeah. uh, strapped onto you. Mm -hmm. So that if you suddenly have a heart attack and die, yeah. uh, th then they can. Uh, you've got this on your wrist. So they say, now who's this bloke that's died? Look on the records. So they go up to the records and read the number out. Oh, that was Mr. Kenneth Smith. Mm -hmm. So then they, they've got all information about you. So uh, now we can contact his next of kin. Yeah. Otherwise, if you haven't got these and you died, they, they think, Who, who's this uh, this bloke? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. It can't have been easy to get to the, the hospital from here, though, the times you needed to go. No, but it don't matter. I always manage to get there. You always manage to get there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll start here. Pass them round. Yeah. When I left this country, I left all my albums at the door, and people have taken pictures out of them. Uh, and uh, I wish they hadn't. They, they've emptied all a lot of my uh, uh, albums. But brother Mike put some of the pictures in, and here's some of the pictures. It's uh, uh, Blackpool Illuminations. <laughs> I'm sure, yeah, just hand them around the lot and yeah, it'll come back to me. <laughs> so what, what do you do for c food here, yeah, Ken? Sorry? What do you do for food? Uh, eat it. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <Yeah. laughs> you fish for a lot of your own food, don't you? I do, but uh, only when I haven't got food. Yeah. What's your favourite food you make? Ooh. I think it's all equal with me. Mm -hmm. There's only uh, mm -hmm. that gherkin mm -hmm. that, that I can't eat. I'm uh, allergic to it. You're allergic to gherkin, eh? Yeah. I don't think that's a bad thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's, thing. it's the only thing that I... Uh, that doesn't affect my body. Yeah. You can tell them pictures was taken in my younger days. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. What's the date on it? That's yeah, from last year. Right. Did you want to read it, Ken? No, yeah. you read it. Oh, Jack, you read it. I haven't got my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> haven't got your glasses? No. You don't wear glasses. glasses. <laughs> no. That's <laughs> 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 fine. Yeah. Need it. No? Uh, okay. Not very good reader, Ken. <laughs> this is from uh, Mike Smith. Oh, that's my brother. That's all that. Ah, okay. That's your brother, do you say? Mike Smith. Is Mike Mike Smith from look at it. Bridgewater, Somerset. Oh no, it's a different Mike then. <laughs> okay. No, mine comes from Derbyshire, my brother right. does. Mm. So that's one of the many people. It's just that he's got the same name as my uh, brother. Yes. Yeah. It's from the 21st of November last year. Dear Ken, I hope you don't mind me writing to you. You don't know me, so sorry if this is a little strange. I've just watched Lizzie's fantastic documentary about you and felt compelled to write to you. I was very touched learning about you and your wonderful story. You seem such a brave, kind and thoughtful man. I have to admit, I'm very jealous of your lifestyle. It must be incredibly challenging at times, I'm sure. But it's a life I've often considered, yet haven't been brave enough to do it yet. To live isolated, away from other people, and to live totally by your rule is something I've always wanted to do. Hopefully I'll get the chance to do it, to live at peace in a shining 
location like you do. I'm sure it will happen one day, I just need to find the right location and build my own cabin. Since I watched your documentary, I've often wondered how you are. I'm sorry to hear about your stroke and recent health problems. I hope you are keeping well and are warm and happy in your cabin. I'm sure you are sitting in front of the fire enjoying a drink and listening to nature all around you. I'm so envious. I wonder if you've had more strangers like me contacting you after watching the documentary. Don't worry, I'm not after anything. I just want to say hello, to wish you well, and to say Happy Christmas too. Stay healthy and happy, Ken. Warm regards, Mike Smith. Now that's the letter I do like, because a lot of the others say, uh, I'd be ple uh, pleased if you would uh, re reply to yeah. me, things like that. And with all the letters you've got, there's no way there's that you no could way. be. Because you can't be going, how far is the nearest post office from here? <laughs> it's Fort William. Yeah, so quite a trek. Over some Munro's. Ken, how did you, um, why did you pick this spot out of the whole of the UK? How did you end up getting to here? Uh, well, the, 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 the other place, uh, when it burnt down, uh, uh, one of the things about it was it was always a drafty place with strong winds coming through. And uh, it, it's right against the bay where all the fishermen go. So. Uh, choose a, w a more wild spot and it was really wild when I, uh, I first came here because it was completely cut off by trees and mm. couldn't get in. Yeah. You'd been down this park before then obviously? Well, I, w I walked through uh, through the woodland uh, quite a few times but after my cabin got burnt down yeah. uh, uh, I wanted to choose uh, a different uh, sort of uh, place, uh, as I wrote in my letters, it, a place that is free from humanoids. Mm. But there was no uh, 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 way in yeah. then. How's that working out for you? <laughs> 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 you don't mind us like bombarding no. you today, do you? No. <laughs> it, was, it is a pleasure to meet you, mate. Oh, it really is. I'm, 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 a, I'm a fan of yours. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need anything else dropping off? I'll tell you what I do need. Uh, uh, I, I was thinking about it this morning because uh, I got up when it was dark. Uh, I need candles. You need some more candles. Oh yeah, lots and lots and lots of candles. I can give you the money ahead of time, and you can just spend it if you want. Do you want me to give you the money? Um, yeah. But yeah, we'll get yeah. Whenever one of us goes into town, sorry, mate. your feet are. Sorry. <laughs> how many how many candles do you need? Just as many as we can get. Yeah. Well, well, I think you're only just buy it. Uh, you should tell everyone that sends a letter to send the candles. Yeah. Yeah. Stop buying candles. Ken, is there a uh, toilet I could use? Sorry. Is there a toilet or that I could use? Say that again. A toilet. Oh, well, that's just, just the pee you want. Just the pee, mate. Yeah, yeah. just go anywhere. Anywhere, yeah. <laughs> I did one, but I didn't want to. Eh? Is that you? you? No. Yeah. No. It's a long no. while ago. Yeah. Uh, 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 black hole illumination. <laughs> that's me, uh, yeah. yeah. I'm doing the fun <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd been in hospital for about uh, eight weeks. I, I, I'd, I'd been attacked and had a brain hemorrhage. Yeah. We're gonna see, do you want to sit down and tell us about that? Is that all right? And when I was uh, there, my uh, my dad, uh, my mother went to the chemist uh, for no apparent reason, and they said to her, "I've got some pictures here that and we know your son is ill in hospital. Yeah, but these have got to be paid for." Yeah. And so she, they said, uh, "Oh, uh, yeah, n no problem." Uh, 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 you pay pay for them. Uh, I'll pay for them straight away. She says so. She paid for the films, mm. and uh, she took them up to me, uh, uh, Dad. And my mother's starting to look at me. She says, "Dennis, look at these pictures here." <laughs> and, and my dad picks them up and goes through them, and he says, "Ah, oh, that's all right. I'll take uh, take them to him uh, uh, in hospital, Derbyshire Royal Infirmary." He says it'll bring his memory back. <laughs> You, so you had a brain hemorrhage, didn't you? When you yeah. How old was you? Uh, it, uh, it was 1974. Uh, I'd be about uh, uh, 20, 
twenty twenty six maybe yeah, like that. What, what what happened what happened there can you tell the, the I got viewers? attacked who attacked you sorry who attacked you yeah walking coming from a discotheque mate uh, in them days I used to go around discotheques yeah. you know. <laughs> and I uh, got attacked by about uh, eight teenagers or, although they say uh, there was only two attacked me yeah and uh, they shoved me through a window yeah and uh, punched me head butted me and them sort of things yeah do you remember it then yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd, everybody would remember that no but yeah. matter how old they are but uh, I didn't go into hospital that night it, it, it was some time uh, uh, later yeah. and then uh, yeah, Brad uh, I used to get these terrible headaches and then be brain hemorrhage yeah and uh, I was actually, uh, uh, on the day that it, it hemorrhaged, I was at, uh, at work and I just thought uh, I'd got flu or something. Yeah. And I got on the bus and come back home, then, uh, it, then it went really, really bad. Yeah. And uh, I, was, I was in bed and every heartbeat, woof, woof, my head, it was like expanding. Mm. And I thought, well, something's happening to me here. I've, I've, I've got to raise the alarm. And then, and then I found out I'd lost, uh, got paralysis in my right leg. Mm. So I crawled across the uh, bedroom floor. The only light that come into place uh, came from uh, outside. So, and it had come on. It was a street lamp. And it had come on, so it must have been about uh, three or four o'clock in the morning. Mm. And uh, I'm uh, shoving myself uh, along the floor. Uh, I was using my sh uh, shoulder because the other side was uh, uh, paralysed. Then, as I shoved myself along, bump mm. into the wall. Get the pressure with me other foot on until I, it went up like that to the electric light bulb uh, switch. I managed to reach up to it, and then I slid down. The light came on, and I thought, "Well, that's told the the, the family that uh, uh, I'm ill." Mm. And uh, I thought, I, I, one thing, my mother used to always uh, go to the loo sometime at night. So yeah. I, I thought she'll be going through it uh, sometime soon. And uh, she went through and uh, she saw me light on uh, and decided, uh, oh, I'll switch it off. And she, she couldn't get the door open and so she knew something was wrong. Mm. She, she went. I could hear him, uh, my dad, uh, uh, my mum said to uh, my dad, Dennis, uh, no, first thing was, my mo mother shook him uh, and his first, first words were, what are you messing around this time in the morning, I've got to go to work in the morning. And, and they sa uh, she says, there's something happened to Ken, there's something happened to Ken. So he come through, he couldn't go into the room, he put his shoulder against it and, it starts shoving up the door and it shoved me along uh, uh, the bedroom floor yeah. and then uh, he saw me lying there and he knew straight away there was something wrong. So it, it, he went dashing down the stairs and through the front door. He's never been through the front door very much, I can tell you. Mm -hmm. It's always the back door. And uh, you, it, in them days it, it, there was uh, no mo mobile phones out like that. Mm. And he got to find it, uh, go to the nearest phone box, was a, which was about uh, half a mile away. Called the uh, called for the doctor actually, and then the doctor uh, he came uh, uh, through, and I can remember him coming up to me and shining into my eyes. Now, if you shine into your eyes, I forget uh, what way it is. Uh, your yeah. Your eyeballs remain very small. Yeah, it's something like that. Sh so shone into my eyes, and knew he'd got to get help. Mm. And the ambulance men, uh, men came in about an hour later, took me out to the ambulance on the stretcher, mm. and that's where I stopped for the uh, next eight, week. eight, eight weeks. Eight you're weeks you were in there. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And if it, so, if, if you hadn't got there in time, then you might not have been able to lead this extraordinary life that you've led. In, that was a touch and go, weren't it? It could have been a lot worse. Yeah, it was bad. I was dying, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. when, when I lay there uh, on a hospital bed, uh, they everybody said I was unconscious, but uh, you, you, you can still feel the pain, I can tell you. Yeah. 
Can you, you 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 had that incident when you were younger? Yeah. And then you've had a few healthy like incidents as you got older recent times. Did you have any bad luck with your health or anything in in between that gap, or have you have you been all right? Let's see if I can find it. I'm very impressed with how you've built this. I was saying to the lads that I struggled to put a tent up, Ken. <laughs> 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 I can cook. That's about it. Because so many uh, things have uh, uh, been happening and dry tops and things, and uh, I'll tell you, this is all goes uh, back to the uh, events right from the first time. Mm. And uh, waking out the drone of days spent in an hospital de uh, bed, approximately. Right then, 1952, fractured skull, one day. 1954, seven days. 1956, tonsillitis, seven days. 1957, coma, 14 days. 1974, <laughs> coma. <laughs> brain hemorrhage, 49 days. 1976, knockout at work, five days. 2005, hernia, double, three days. 2006, meningitis. Uh, 2005, operation for double hernia, 2007, concussion, three days, 2007, dislocated spine, three days, 2010, discovery of cancer, one day, 2010, colonoscopy or something, uh, one day, 2010, as above, one day, 2011, Removal of tumour, 35 days. 2011, close of stoma, 10 days. 2014, what's that word? Inserted colonoscope, one day. And then I wrote down, so far, 145 days. 20 week, five days, approximately five months. So, I would now go on to 2015. Tumour from leg, four days. 2017, head blow on railway line, one day. 2018, removal of ankle tumour, six days. 2019, head blow, stroke, 47 days. 2019, surgical endoscopy. Endoscopy. Yeah, <laughs> something like that, <laughs> one day. 2020, log pile falls on me, one day. 2022, tract infection, 26 days. IV uh, cannulation, whatever it is. 2022, and colonoscope, five days, approximately two months. So in hospital bed, I've, I've spent seven months. Not Don't too bad going there. <laughs> <laughs> you, um, for someone who lives so remote, <laughs> you spent quite a bit of time in hospital, haven't you? Seven months. Yeah. Seven do you months. want me to get that yeah. for you? No. Well, oh, you can do, because yeah. I've got this in the hand. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're up there, Is there a tool lock and use, or? No, just pick it up. Yeah. Pick up. Pick up. You go, a burning coal with bare hands. Look, yeah. I'm such yeah. a man, Ken. <laughs> Good times. <laughs> Well, that answers me question of that then, Ken, doesn't it? It certainly <laughs> does. Yeah. Yeah. You've been in and out a lot. You haven't had much luck then, have you? No, I've had all the luck on, on air. I think you've had yeah, a, well, a yeah. lot of luck, actually, yeah. But because of the, uh, the dise diseases, uh, I've survived. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people uh, uh, go, uh, they say, I've, I've had nothing but bad luck, they, uh, they say. In. Yeah. And I say, no. The, the, uh, uh, good luck. Otherwise, you, you're not dead. You've survived. Yeah. You've had the good luck. Yeah. yeah. That's a good mindset to have. That totally. is, Ken. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. This is uh, when I was home and uh, in, uh, abroad, and uh, 
I wrote all this when I was uh, over in Canada. Yeah. Is that a journal, is it, or a? Yeah, the other one. Uh, th this is some of it, but the, I wanted a short one. Yeah. You say you've been writing a journal from when you were very young, then. Four years old. Uh, no, sorry, uh, six years old. From when you were six. What? <coughs> can, sorry. Can, can you remember why you started writing things down? Where that comes from? Really, yeah. Let me just see if I can find what I'm after. Yeah. You you write a journal, yeah, don't you? Yeah. yeah. I don't. I want to start. Twenty. Give me twenty twenty. I start mine. Yeah. Every day you write. Not every day. Every couple of days or like end of a week. It is good because, like we were just saying earlier about something, and I can remember like when we come up, I have no idea what date we come up or like, nothing. I suppose my. My logbook and journal is Instagram. Yeah, but it is a, a modern that, way yeah. of doing it, isn't it? Yeah, and that's, that's, I've told you before, that's similarly how I keep yeah. a log of everything. Isn't yeah. it? That's why I post a lot on, on there because it, I, I can look back and remember. Yeah, yeah. there yeah. is meant to be some good, good health benefit, mental health benefits to keeping yeah. a journal and stuff. That Will was telling me, remember who we had on as a guest? Yeah. He was saying about that. What are you looking for over there, Ken? Yeah, it's a diary. Uh, it's not there. It's not there. I had it yesterday. That was the day of the big storm. Yeah. The way you live, Ken, we were saying outside a little bit, it's a little bit like going back in time and talking to someone <laughs> because of how you live. You live like an old... A lot of people say it's like going back in time. Yeah. <laughs> You, you don't have a TV, a radio, and nothing. It's just you out here, and you do a lot of reading, I suppose. And, yeah. And the people that sent you the letters, and that we just read just one of them, and a lot of the letters are the same, you said. Um, they, uh, he was quite envious of the way you, you lived your life because he, he wants to do that, and he was inspired by you. Anyone that's listening to this and wants to live this sort of lifestyle, what advice would you would you give them? Let me... Well, I don't think it's necessary advice. Just them go and do it. Yeah. Uh, they can. Uh, everybody can do it. Yeah. Me, I had nowhere to live, and uh, I end up uh, having a, a relatively good life. Yeah. Do you, do you, do you recommend this lifestyle to anyone? Yeah, but a you lot have to of them say, yeah, no, I could never do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the people that want to do it, though, you definitely recommend it to, would you? Yeah. Yeah. You've had a good life, you enjoy it. <coughs> yeah. What's, what what, what is your favourite part of being the way you are, living the way you are? What What do you enjoy most about it? You'll find out, uh, like, uh, when I was over in Canada all that while and roaming around for two years, uh, you come across lots and lots of adventures, mm. and it becomes a normal day. Yeah. So, you, uh, so uh, when you're going back out the country, you think these past two years nothing's happened. Mm. It's when you get home, and all these things that have uh, happened, you start because you're going into civilization now, yeah. and you go back into civilization, and you can see the contrast straight away. Yeah. And you uh, you think, oh, when I was abroad, we. we we dropped 100 foot in a car. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, you think, so, the day I bumped into a grizzly bear. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and all these things. Trust, it's a normal day. Yeah. That's crazy. Did you, so when you were in Canada then, you decided that, that this was the life for you? When I got back to Britain. Yeah. Uh, well, I ended up walking around all over uh, Britain then. Yeah. But uh, work, work, money, you need the money, and that had, had done. Uh, so that had made it uh, four years' holiday. So it was uh, no money left now. Yeah. So time to go back to, uh, to work again and uh, get s earn some money. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know when you've had to do trips to to hospital, you've had people come in like we have today, and that. Yeah. Do do you do you struggle like socially since you've been isolated so long? You didn't. You don't seem no, like you do. Don't make at all. any difference no. actually. Yeah. Do you enjoy a bit of company? 
Or can yeah, you, you can give it or take sometimes it? Sometimes I cast. The first thing I did when they all arrived today was cast because the dog come running yeah, around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I've got stuff in garden. Yeah, when it's been so quiet though and you've just been on your own <laughs> and then a dog come up barking and us all trekking in, it must feel a little bit overwhelming, especially, maybe. <laughs> yeah, especially when it runs through your plants. Yeah. You obviously take great pride in your garden. You've got like a guest right. lo lodge across there and that, and, th and this is all stuff you've built yourself. You've got your your logs for your log burner out there. You My garden though, it's, uh, uh, if it weren't for the fact I've been away uh, quite a lot this year, my my garden would be uh, very pretty and no weeds on it. Yeah. But uh, it, it's been impossible, you know, going away for long periods of time. Yeah. And uh, the, when you get back, you look at your garden, you think, oh, blow me neck. Yeah. It's difficult. Yeah, I just noticed in the documentary that you walk for miles and miles and miles. Do you, do you still get about a lot active? Yeah, en enough. Yeah. A lot of people uh, admire me for it. But I don't mm. know why. Uh, they could do it if they wanted. Yeah. But maybe they couldn't do it. Maybe it's their health. Yeah. What what would you say the trick is for you for to survive in it like this? To survive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Breathing. <laughs> no. To be fair, that's something, <laughs> something I wanted to get onto because I yeah. just read a um, a bit about the, the, I, the big I, storm from '89. I um, asked that question because today it's um, it's raining a little bit, but there'd be times where it's snowing or or storms or high winds Storm. and everything and there's just you in this yeah, little yeah. cabin on your own does the it weather never bother one little bit. No. <laughs> reading that article out is it yeah where so, the so, storm the, is? so this is just as an excerpt from so this was from tuesday the 14th of february 1989 mm. um i mean you go into great detail about all the trees being uprooted and um I mean, it, it sounded like read hell, it out, really. read it out, but it's in story form. Okay, right. I'll start <laughs> yeah. from the beginning. Okay, you, your writing is really lovely, by the way. Um, I didn't, I didn't finish writing yesterday's events. I just fled. My massive stretch of trees, right to the edge of woodland, became uprooted. Debris and branches fell all around me. Huge, eighty foot to hundred foot, became snapped like matchsticks. The whole forest around me was gradually falling apart. I knew my stove must be dubbed with a bucket of water, in fact two. The whole bucket full became slung onto my blazing logs, giving a back throw of smoke that engulfed my entire room. Running to the burn, one more gust bent over each tree above me. My only way to see what way they were to fall in the blackness of night was to glance directly into the sky to watch their silhouette, and fear was so great I began to yell, no, no, no. I managed it back inside, engulfed my stove with one more bucket of water, bundled my sleeping bag, camera equipment and valuable data like passports, bank accounts etc into my rucksack. That only took me seconds and I was gone into the outside hell. The trees were just lying everywhere, all tangled together like cobwebs. I couldn't get through them and had to make a return journey to find a further route. Within 100 yards of my cabin in came a prolonged gust of hurricane force and you could hear trees cracking off their stumps from every direction. Wind began to lift me. I hung onto a small 20-foot pine, looked upwards to distinguish falling trees and yelled into the deafening roar and blinding snow, no, no, no. I've had so many things happen in my life, but fear like this, never. I began to pray. That's how frightened I was. I didn't even look back to see if my cabin still stood. All I wanted to do was get into a clearing away from falling trees. Somehow I managed to reach the edge of the wood. A train was stationary on the above line and began flashing my light in hope of reaching them. Three more buck gusts came. I just watched trees bend, crack and fall to the earth. A birch tree fell upon the small footbridge over the burn preventing me reaching the train as it began slowly to move up the line and vanish behind the pine forest. By the time I was on the line, the decision came to reach the work hut, a quarter mile down the line. It would do to protect me from the driving snow and no, and no trees were around it to fall. That's why the train had stopped. The cabin had disintegrated upon the line, scattering its beams and hunks of boarding to prevent passage without its removal. Maybe I could doss under the bridge. Returning up the line back towards the wood before me and towing a locomotive in my direction was the pre previous train. It wasn't a train as we know them, 
it was some sort of machine covered in an iron shield. Flashing my torch, he just gathered speed past me. He didn't see me, maybe due to his hardly visible small window surrounded by its iron plate of armoury. Reaching the bridge, I climbed beneath it, but driving snow was so wild it flew horizontal right through the arch from one side to the other, and winds were putting the bridge's structure at risk. I'd try the next two huts upwards. Maybe not the first one, as it was close to the woodland, but the second one, around a mile and a half away. That would be free from trees and wind, plus it would make made of railway sleepers. As the line stretched from one mile along the woodland edge, it became obvious why that train was iron-plated and why the other had broken down. A huge hundred-foot larch lay protruding nine foot above the line to cause a head-on collision. That's why the other train must have been coated in armoury to prevent further accidents. Upon reaching the wood end, winds were at their peak. By now, few trees surrounded me, yet fear returned. With wind so fearful, I flung myself flat upon the railway banks and hung on to what grass or bushes could be found. One gust caught me by surprise, lifted me, turned me around and placed me still standing in the opposite direction. Another one caught me unaware and stood found myself arched with a pack on the back holding onto the iron railway line until it temporarily lessened. Around 10pm I arrived at the hut and bedded myself in for the night. I slept cold and restless. Winds continued their turmoil throughout the night. Noises were deafening, branches rattled my roof and roaring sounds grew with intensity. Work trolleys moved the line and power saws were used for removal of felons trees, then slowly came the greyness of dawn. By now winds were lessen, lessening, but snow still fell. Opening the door, row and trees lay uprooted in the snow, packing my gear, heavy eyes made, uneasy walking, but approaching woodland hurried my step, arriving at its edges to visualise a third of its devastated to the earth, and there sat and its uprooted evil work sheep chewing their cud and most unconcerned but hundreds must have lost their lives. One section of forest was obliterated from railway line to trag, not a tree standing. The railway hut which I refused to doss in had its gable end missing and most of the railway fence was destroyed by falling trees. I was sure my cabin was going to be intact and it was as clear as it came into view from the railway line. Arriving my cabin proved most difficult but far easier than getting away from it as was last night and regarding my prayer it became granted. If counting a 50, 50 foot radius of my cabin, 30 trees had fallen, two upon my roof, one 100, large fell, 100 foot larch fell directly towards my roof but became intercepted by another larch which fell and lodged in the V of an upright 30 footer. If not for this, my cabin would not be done existent, would, be, would now be non-existent, and neither would I, for I was in it at the time. I said my prayers last night, and they became grinded. The whole of today became spent mopping up. Those two 80-foot larch were removed from my roofing. Branches and sticks entirely covered my zinc sheeting, which were slung to the ground, and one 18-foot of tin became replaced just above my gable and my entire hallway lined with three foot boards and had been ripped away and some time was spent collecting them. Only one door at the end of my hallway had been ripped open. All windows were intact but were plastered with some sort of wet moss ripped from the earth. Radio Scotland unfortunately forecast the storm was to return this evening but not so strong. 80 mile per hour gusts continue throughout today so precautions for tonight's storm were soon underway. There was no problem requiring what I wanted, thick, stout, Y-shaped props ranging up to 20 foot in length to wedge all dicey leaning trees in an 80 foot radius of my cabin and by dusk it was done. Now warm and sound within my cabin, I waited as winds began to strengthen. All Radio Scotland was to speak about was past 29 hours of storm and torrential flooding in the lowlands. It was classed as hurricane with gusts recorded above 150 miles per hour but it was to say the return of the hurricane would not be so strong, just storm force 10. I've been awake now since my morning rise to speak 42 hours ago for, for fear kept me awake even while shivering in the railway hut or trying my hardest to sleep, but it never happened. Therefore, come 10pm and listening to the news forecast, up to then were saying winds were now recorded at 100 miles per hour, 
and at their peak. So if I survived winds 50 miles per hour stronger, then surely I'd survive tonight. And I slew, soon slipped into slumberland. Mm -hmm. wow. wow, that's incredible. <laughs> and that didn't put you off. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't put you off, Spain, <laughs> obviously. I mean, that, I mean, that, that it's <laughs> just a normal day. <laughs> <laughs> I went glamping once and it rained overnight. That was a bit terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that really did sound horrific. Ken. Yeah. But, um, yeah. There's that's incredible. There's, there's part in there the, that the, I just... The thing that, that happened after that, uh, it, it is in there, but I'll uh, explain yeah. it, uh, what, what happened. But when the storm ended, uh, I thought to myself, I wonder how many animals and birds have uh, that, uh, perished in this storm. Mm -hmm. So I went through the wood, and the uh, first thing I com come across uh, was uh, a, a hoody crow. And it had got a broken wing, so I picked it uh, picked it up. Uh, but it was going bonkers at me and pe pecking me. But I, I'd got a, a cage to keep it in. I, th I was wondering whether it had uh, uh, its wing would uh, ever get right. And I kept it for about uh, uh, six weeks, and I, I called it Simon. And uh, after six weeks, it's uh, it, it, it was healed and I'd, I'd fed it well and uh, it, it, it had lost all its fear of me and uh, eventually I thought well I, I can't keep a, a, a pet hoodie like this and feed it for the rest of my life I'll uh, uh, just release it so I released it uh, down by the bay uh, w where the burn rolls in I thought I'll give it a, a look in about six hours see if it's still there and because of its broken wing, it had managed to climb up, up the street, but it was still there. Check next morning, it had gone. Now, uh, the years pass on. There was uh, a deer that had been hit by a train. That's why you're not allowed to walk up the railway line. Yeah. And uh, all the hoodies had come in to feed off it. And when, it, when I was passing, all the hoodies got up like that, except one. And it just kept on packing, uh, pecking the uh, uh, this uh, corpse, and I was only about six foot from it, and I, I knew it was Simon mm -hmm. uh, because it was a tame one. So it just kept uh, on eating this bird. More years uh, pass, uh, nearly thirty years, in fact. And I'd become a stalker, and I was taking guests out on the uh, estate. We went into uh, Corricraker, we sat down to spy on those with binoculars, then out of the wood came this uh, uh, hoodie crow and it walked straight up to me and, and the guest. Uh, it was only about six inches away and it would just made its noise of whack and it just walked away down to the bed. We, uh, we followed it but it seemed to disappear into the, uh, the bed. But that was Simon. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> what a story that is. Yeah. Oh. And, th and that I call, uh, lots of people say that uh, things that I've uh, told them and all this, what an amazing life uh, you, you've led in this. To me, it's just a, a normal life. Yeah, yeah. And you wouldn't change Seems it. Seems to happen all, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's better. Uh, now, other people that say they have a boring life, mm. uh, a lot of them probably have. Because all they do is, is, uh, is sit in uh, in a blooming office all day, on typewriter, don't they? Yeah. So you must do a lot of writing. By the way that he read that, it's clear that you've you're you're very good with the way you write and and, and use your words. I wish I was a bit like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Where did does that it's come from? To you? show it. Do you do a lot well, of reading uh, and writing? I lost uh, my memory and how to write when uh, I had the uh, uh, brain hemorrhage. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I didn't do much writing uh, uh, at all until I went out to Canada. Uh, but because I couldn't, I'd, I'd not bothered to lay, uh, learn how to write again. Mm -hmm. So when I was over in Canada, I uh, 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 learnt to, uh, uh, to write. I, I, was, I became self-taught. Mm. And it was uh, extremely difficult. Mm. Uh, and when I, I wanted to look a word up, I'd go through word after word and up to an hour at a time trying to look it up in the dictionary. I can uh, spell pretty well now, mm. but uh, I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't write. But I was learning myself, and I thought, when I'm looking at that dictionary. 
if I wanted something to, to look up the word February, say, you start at, at uh, the, the letter A and you're looking along all the way into uh, F until you come across February. But then I thought, and so, there must be an easier way to go through all these words. And then I thought, yeah, why not start at, uh, at the end of the Fs instead of at the front? Because if you start at the front, it all begins in F. Mm. If you start at the end, it, it'll end in y, uh, uh, in any of the letters in the alphabet. Mm. So you think, so February, right, that ends in Y. So you, you go through it from the rear, and you'll come through uh, one ending in Y. No, that's not it. Go along a bit further. Oh, that ends in Y. No, that's not it. A bit further along. Yeah. That's it, I find February. So it's a lot quicker than starting at the, at the front where every word is F mm. and you get mm. your variations from the back. Mm. So, so, so how old were you when you were over in Canada? And then you had to, and then you taught yourself to, uh, to read and write again? Uh, 27. 27 years old mm. and, yeah. and you had to teach yourself again how to read yeah. and write. You seem Quite to amazing, learn, really. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not only did you learn to read and write again then, you were learning all this this skill of building um, yeah. and mm. so because of the way you self taught again yeah. going backwards yeah. it naturally came to you to, the <laughs> oh, to, be able to build backwards mm. and I <laughs> discovered <laughs> other things as well uh, uh, with the uh, dictionary yeah, I think I've got the old dictionary here somewhere a baby doll I just said in the corner then Ken just scared the life out of me <laughs> <laughs> the baby, the baby doll. doll in the corner there oh. just scared the life out of me <laughs> <laughs> Costs a lot of money. Three, uh, they're, they're extremely valuable. Oh. Each one costs three hundred. Really? Yeah. What's the story it's behind that then? Well, uh, it, it's for all these drug addicts. Uh, uh, you've got one smoking dope, another smoking uh, uh, a fag there. Uh, if you if you look at them, that's what they're doing. They're smoking. They also they okay. also drinking. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> They're also drinking. It's uh, it, I put that there. Oh, aren't they sweet? That stunts your growth. <laughs> right. So this now is your I'm your old dictionary, Ken. Yeah, one of them I've mentioned quite a lot actually. But when I was out in uh, uh, Canada, and uh, I started at the end of the dictionary for the spelling. I discovered one or two things about it. Have you heard of a palindrome, any of you? Of what, sorry? Palindrome. No. Uh, I'll give you an example. So it's a, a word that starts and reads the same as backwards. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's called a palindrome. Now, here I've got uh, all them days when I was stuck in uh, minus uh, 30 and minus 40, in that log cabin, and it's dark for endless hours. You've got to have something to do. So I picked yeah. up the dictionary. Uh, well, I've got to come straight on to one. And I wrote them down. There's one, uh, so that I remember all the palindromes. Yeah. Uh, they are what? Rotter. Russell. Rotter. Rotter. <laughs> I'm terrible at reading, I told you that. <laughs> and it's Rotter, and it's that backwards as well, yeah. Yeah, Rotter. Yeah. Mm. I'm glad that I spelt that and wrong. And another one uh, uh, word is kayak, K A Y A K. They call palindrome. Yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, so I, w I went through. The, that's why this is up, up the creek. It's in bits. Yeah. Uh, I went through uh, the whole diction. It started at the back, and over them winter hours, I looked at every word so that I could find the palindromes. Mm. Uh, but I didn't choose uh, uh, things like oxo because there's lots of uh, uh, three letter uh, mm -hmm. words nice they've got to be oh, starting it for yeah that one says rotor let's see if i can find another is, one is that the trick as well keep your mind active all the time as well do yeah. things like this keep your mind active let's see some of the this is dropping to bits this is uh, yeah also because i was learning myself to read and write once I found uh, uh, the word, uh, I'd write it in my dictionary, and it, so I'd remember it for future. I'd mm. learnt how to spell it, 
and you can see two words that I'd put in there. They're, they're not palindromes, but they're two words that at the time uh, I couldn't uh, spell, so I had to find them in the dictionary, and yeah. I wrote them there so that... So that you remember them. Q, yeah. is that? Sorry? Is that Q? Q and Queasy. Queasy. Ken, you've got some beautiful locks in Scotland. Do you, do you ever swim? Have you ever been a swimmer? No, but I've had times where... Uh, uh, I wish I would have. I, I, I was once crossing. Uh, this was in Canada. Uh, I was with my friend and uh, we was uh, wanting a place to build a tent, a uh, pitcher's tent, a raging ri uh, river and there were fallen trees on it, uh, across it. My mate got across there without it happening to him. But, uh, I got my rooks, I can't walking across the uh, these two trees that had fallen down. I thought I'd get across, but but the bark gave way and mm. it no knocked me off balance with the rucksack uh, into the river. And I uh, thought to myself I was going to drown. I definitely went under with rucksack on. Yes. Uh, and uh, and the reason I knew I'd gone under, uh, but I managed to get the rucksack off my shoulder, and then uh, I managed to get uh, 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 get out. And I was about uh, 200 yards down the uh, uh, river. So the next was a fast flowing river. <laughs> uh, oh, it was quite fast actually. Yeah. Uh, so swimming. Yeah. I can't swim. So it got you back into the in where you could stand up, obviously, which was lucky. Yeah, and no, I went back. Uh, well, we, I was we wet through, so we had, we had to pitch a tent somewhere at night. Now I'd. Uh, I don't know what happened after that, but I felt blooming cold. We we jumped in the lock this morning at seven o'clock. That was cold. We do we do a lot of cold water though. Where we're from in Suffolk, we jump in the North Sea most mornings. <laughs> Why do you want to do that? <laughs> <laughs> it's really excellent, good. Excellent, excellent question. Yeah, it's very. Yes. It is very good for you, for you physically and mentally. Nice. <laughs> yeah, it gives you a good buzz when you come out of the water. Uh. You're doing it tomorrow if you fancy it. Mind you, <laughs> it sounds like you need a brain transplant. <laughs> well, you're, not your first, body had, uh, you're not the first. You're not the first. Your body had, uh, <laughs> uh, what would I say? You need a brain transplant, yeah. uh, but the body would reject you. <laughs> 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 Cheers, Ken. Definitely. I think just for me, because I, I mean, I. Just reading in there, obviously, you, when you were going through that hell of the storm and all this was going on, you you wrote in there that you found yourself praying to you know to make yeah. sure everything was okay. Do you do you have any sort of faith or any belief in a in a higher power? Uh, uh, every time religion comes on on the radio in the morning, which it does, I switch the radio off. But I'm a certain believer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, uh, it, it 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 does say uh, in in the Bible. Uh, what was it again? Yeah, when, when it's nearly near in the end uh, of, of the earth, uh, walk out of all churches, B because around Christ's time, I don't know how many beliefs the, uh, they were, but th there was more or less only uh, uh, one belief, uh, and. Uh, that's what everybody used to be, uh, believe in. It, it's the it's the ten uh, commandments. Everybody was on the ten commandments. But these days, how many religions is there? So many religions, and uh, the, a lot of people say, "Oh, they are they all the same. They are all the same," but they're not. Mm. I think there's a saying in the Bible saying that you uh, 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 you say one uh, how would I say uh, uh, just one word of this Bible is taken out or wrote differently you won't uh, you won't go into the everlasting life mm. it's it's some um, people thinking oh that word's wrong here's the right one it's it's writing a completely over the years that, that, that come on uh, and pass you're following all them other, other things and eventually becomes a different belief to what it was before and that's why it says in the Bible in the end walk out of all churches mm -hmm. because what you're reading 
it's, it's something that's wrote down and uh, it yeah. gives a different story. Yeah. And uh, it's like Chinese whispers. Almost. Yeah, I think you just got it's like, China, like the story changes as it, as, it, as time oh, passes. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. Changes so you do you have your own understanding of what you believe in? And, uh, but and more or less it says if you want to follow uh, 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 the right religion, don't go, don't go to church anymore, just follow the Ten Commandments. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know the Ten Commandments actually. Oh. <laughs> so you're not following them then? <laughs> <laughs> well, I try, well, I automatically know what's wrong uh, yeah. uh, when it comes right. Mm -hmm. I haven't uh, done anything like this, but uh, a, a lot of things, like I was reading in the paper, uh, a, a man's uh, being uh, in, in his court uh, for raping. Well, th that that's. Uh, a, r a wrong thing, mm. that is. So you know where. Uh, you know uh, you're right from wrong. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know what's wrong. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and if you stab somebody, you know that's wrong. Yeah. Poke somebody's eyes out, you know it's wrong. Yeah. So you live your life just doing things the right way. And that's what you like to well, do. I don't, well, I don't know if it's right. Uh, yeah. uh, well, I don't know. But you're not going around poking people's eyes out. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. <laughs> What is what is your kind of daily routine, Ken? What, what do you do? What, what do I do when? What your routine, sort of when you get oh. up in the morning, what's kind of your, what, what do you do? Breakfast. The uh, Breakfast. First, which I've had. Cup of tea. It's kettle's boiling, by the way, if anybody wants a cup of <laughs> oh, That'd be nice. Uh, I always have a cup of tea, and then uh, out I go uh, collecting logs, and I've already done that, uh, but I need a lot more collecting so before you go yeah. that's what we'll be doing we're going to yeah. go and chop some wood for you aren't we yeah. yeah whenever you decide to go well i just want to thank you for coming on to the podcast and talking we're going to hang around with you a bit longer but we're going to stop recording but we're still going to chat to you for a bit longer if that's all right but <laughs> yeah we'll come we'll sort some wood out for you we'll come well. sort some wood yeah. out and that yeah, as well but i just want to thank you while hey. we're still recording you ought to go and listen to the logs splitting then. Oh, uh, uh, if it's uh, sound that, that comes on, if yeah. it, yeah, well, swinging the axe and all you're doing is <laughs> yeah. chop, chop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we might film some. Might make, might make a good intro. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the sound of the wood. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we'll do that then. Good stuff. Yeah. But thank you so much. Thank you for, so for much. For well, you're not going yet, so you can do that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Off. yeah. <laughs> Did you want to say anything bef to to the? Guests that are listening before before we turn it off. Can't think of anything really. Mm. Uh, oh yeah, some of this isn't uh, as regards this uh, this program. I uh, used to be a tiler. There you are, yeah. floor and wall tiler. <laughs> uh, tiler. Mine was a floor tiler. I used to work for Gra Grandma's Flooring Company. Did you? Yeah. What? What did you do there? What? Uh, uh, there was there, there was six by two tiles, and yeah, uh, we used to uh, lay them down on the floor, screed out, and then you got you could manage six tiles in your hand, and used to drop them in, doom, 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 and it'd go uh, three going one way, three going the other, three going okay. one way, three going the other, and it formed a pattern, the yeah. uh, basket pattern. Yes, yeah, 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 like parquet flooring. That like was, what? Like parquet flooring. But yeah. Yeah, 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 that was my job. Yeah. Uh, one of my jobs. Yeah. I, I worked uh, laying uh, uh, tiles in a big prison uh, uh, down south. What was the name again? Uh, she, she was in it. I saw her, and was it Moore's Murderer? Uh, uh, I think the I saw Moore's Murderers. Moore's Murderers, yeah. Yeah, I, I think that was who I saw down there. Uh, All right. Uh, it's mm. a big, a big place. There. Myra Hindley. Myra Hindley. Myra Hindley. Yeah, That's Myra Hindley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she yeah. she went to quite a few different jails. All oh, right. Uh, well, that was one. That, uh, well, well, what, whatever she was in. Yeah. Whereabouts was it? What part of the country? Oh, blimey, it's so long ago. I I, I don't know. Oh, oh, I can. All I can remember was, uh, well, uh, not a lot really. Uh, I know that uh, I didn't do it, uh, but I, all the other workers did. Uh, they, they clambered onto the roof, uh, which was uh, uh, these uh, windows 
like the roofing mm -hmm. like that, that uh, and you could see through the glass. Yeah. And they were all, all, all the women was having a shower down there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I never yeah. went up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, but, but according to the, uh, well, the brother did, it, they were putting fingers up to him. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure they were, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, that's what I was going to ask you, actually, because obviously we know that out here you were a stalker. Well, well, and you yeah. do Canada. What what other? Obviously, we know now as well that you're a tiler for a while. What other jobs have you done over the years? Oh, I see. First one uh, did for about five years. Uh, it was uh, forestry commission uh, in Rannoch, just down there, Rannoch Moor, and all that. I, was, I did that for five years. Yeah. I wasn't going anywhere fast, so. Uh, I went down uh, b back to England. Uh, m my next, yeah, uh, my next job I took up nursery work. Only stuck it for six weeks on Scotland nurseries. Then I uh, uh, then I left uh, left to start on my own. I'd learnt enough about uh, nursery work. Good profit on it as well. Uh, it was it was about. Uh, Oh, what, what year would it uh, be? Nineteen ninety seven, ninety sixty-five, I think. And I was making uh, about uh, thirty pound a day, so that w that was quite good. Mm, yeah. But you could only do it during winter hours. Yeah. And uh, then I decided uh, I'd go on to farming. I was still keeping my nursery work on actually, uh, but only uh, uh, you can only lift the trees during winter, so you have to you lose all summer profit. So I, I, I went on to farming and I did farming for about uh, six or seven years. Right. But very interesting job, but it was only nine pound a week. Uh, that that was the wages in them days. What sort of farming was that? That's what we oh, doing. it was a big mixture. Right, uh, okay. Uh, uh, we've got the dairy farm and all that as mm. well. Right, okay. Yeah. Uh, and sheep. Anyways, uh, then my brother come up to me. You ought to join me in the uh, flooring company, and that's where I'd, I learnt the flooring company. Mm -hmm. And then uh, after that, because I would, uh, could do uh, tile flooring, I left. Uh, to go on to a firm called Bomer and Kirkland, right? And th uh, they did uh, l lots of buildings. I, I liked uh, uh, that job, and I stuck that for for nine years. And that was when I decided I'm going to go abroad and tour the world because I got the money. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, but in them days you needed a visa. Yeah. And I thought I've got to get a visa off my boss. And the, the, the owner uh, of it was uh, uh, Bomer, uh, Bomer and Caitlin, and he was coming on site that day. I thought, well, here we go then. I went up to him and I says to him, uh, I need a visa, I'm going on my holidays abroad. And he says, oh, yeah, he said, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a, a, a visa, uh, uh, whatever it is, just, uh, you have to, uh, he'll have to sign it saying, uh, I've got a job when I come back. He says, uh, oh, what, what, you going for a fortnight's holiday? And I <laughs> says, uh, no, a year. A year? Where the heck do you find your money? And I says, you give it to me. And of course with that, uh, it was right. Uh, it was laughing his head off and yeah. says, yeah, no problem. And I got a written letter that did employ me when I come back. Wow. But I never went back uh, because my, my mum and dad had died right. and I had no home to go to. So just went touring all over uh, mm -hmm. uh, British Isles, mm -hmm. Island of Mull, Island of Arran, and uh, I'd, uh, I also walked from Land's End to, to John the Groats. That nearly took me two years, that did. I wasn't yeah, in really. Ullery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just by, slowly making your way round. <laughs> yeah. Island of Ull, Island of Marin, uh, Island of Skye. I went round all islands. You can go by ferry, uh, ferry boat. Uh, mm -hmm. The first one is Yardland of Sky, and then Mull, uh, Arran, and then uh, lots of uh, islands you can uh, visit. It's quite yeah. good to do that. Yeah. 
<laughs> Incredible. <laughs> so considering, you know, everything that's happened and your brain image, everything like that, I've got to say your memory's pretty. Um, <laughs> yeah, spot on. Spot on, isn't it? And that I think that that helps from keeping a journal like you have as well, well exactly, and keeping yeah. notes, doesn't it? I think. Yeah. I think I, you've inspired me to start making my own journal. I think and keeping notes of things because. When when I caught that ailment, uh, uh, you talk about memory. I can't even remember the name of it. Now, U UTI, it's called. Mm -hmm. uh, th that was what hospitalised me uh, about uh, uh, three months ago, and and that uh, that is extremely damaging to your memory. Uh, mm -hmm. It it starts low down in in your stomach, and you don't realise yet. Yeah, it's called UTI infection, and and all the germs are coming upwards mm -hmm. uh, in your body, but you don't uh, realise it. You just think you've got bad guts and that, but then it, it sort of hits you. It, and the we uh, when it hit me, I was uh, out, uh, outside with the power saw, and uh, I was filling it up, and I thought, what the how am I doing? And yet I'd been out using the power saw that morning and I thought nothing was wrong with me. I thought, what the hell am I doing? I'm, I'm putting oil into the petrol and petrol into the oil. I thought, I'm going back to Frontier, so uh, emptying it out. Uh, so I took the, uh, took, took the top off of the can and, and put it down and uh, washed everything out and then I think, where the hell have I put the uh, uh, blooming uh, cap? And I was hunting everywhere. This is when I'm starting to become confused. And the hiker come in from the gate, actually. And they've been climbing the hills. And uh, he, he says, hi, I'm such and such. And I turned round uh, to answer him. And it was then I realised that I couldn't even speak. And I knew wow. then that I'd got, uh, got to get help. Yeah. So I... Uh, uh, I, I've got a tracker. I, I don't know if you've ever read of them. Uh, and uh, I like went an, like an I, SOS tracker. Sorry, like an SOS tracker. Y yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. yeah. And uh, I went outside. Now, it's, uh, during the things uh, just lately, which has been the SOS uh, S one, it's usually a helicopter comes in. But this time, I did it to the estate. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the estate arrived, and I'm still uh, struggling with my power saw uh, to get it connected up. But my mind had completely gone. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the estate uh, says, well, run you up to the station and put you on the train, and one of us will accompany you to hospital. <coughs> so we, we arrive at uh, uh, hospital, and... Uh, that that point, news is getting around, and and Lizzie arrives. Uh, that was there. Well, yeah. you know Lizzie, don't you? Uh, uh, she arrives, and uh, every uh, it, it had got to about seven in the evening. Everybody else had gone home. Uh, Lizzie stopped behind uh, because I uh, couldn't uh, speak. She was having to speak for me. I didn't write this while I was in hospital. I was unable to, but uh, I wrote it afterwards. Ken, can I put some more wood on your fire? It looks yeah, like it's going do, down a bit. Gonna, gonna yeah. <laughs> what I wrote on this was too, too Ill. Ill to write again until 9th of the 5th, 22. Uh, so. That's in April. Yeah. So I was unable to write again. So when I'm in hospital. This is what I wrote. I was in hospital quite a while. I lay in my bed peering through the window of hospital ward 3 to an outside view of an embankment covered in beautiful shrubs watching a black bear and suddenly it flew upwards to branches. Then in came a cat rubbing its whiskers on the tree, uh, on the tree trunks. Then in came a nurse with a machine, winding it around my arm, checking my pulse. This happened 
night long. Oh, yeah, every three hours. So I didn't get much sleep. And midday, Alan called with lots of sh uh, shooting mags, but would have called weeks earlier if not for catching COVID. Next day, Lizzie calls. She's fallen out with Dave, the tent man. She tends to go around uh, soon, business-wise, I presume, and upon return, hopes to make amends. Next day, they wheeled in, in a patient today not knowing he had COVID, but they soon found out. Before such things were were found out, to rop up or spew my guts up and, and felt really ill. The man suffering uh, COVID, whatever it was, was wheeled away to an another room and I was le uh, left alone for a long while. Just seen it on Data. That bloke they wheeled away suffered neuron dis uh, disease. Next day. Alone all day and no one allowed in to see me. I'm alone in a room where they all come in wearing plastic transplant uh, transparent uh, masks covered the whole of their faces and they came up shoving this thing up my nose. Next day, alone all day, people came to see me, but I was isolated on the Covid bump. They wouldn't let them in, but they had a telly to watch. Next day, alone all day, no one disturbed me. Lizzie came to see me uh, with books, but they wouldn't let her in. I lay there all day uh, looking up on the telly, and my only visitors were those covered in bluish body covering and this queer he head cover that they shoved into the bin upon departure. They shoved this thing up my nose to take samples and it was uncomfortable. Squeeze my hand they said and it really did improve the situation. Next day I'm in isolation with a terrible cough. No one near me and they take samples from my nose and throat. I'm told I'll be in here a while yet yeah, and I tell them I've got to go to the dentist as well as a Covid jab tomorrow. Whoops. Did you have Covid then? Yeah. yeah so, so for all of us you had Covid as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Stuck in hospital with Alone all day, no one disturbed me. Oh I've read that bit. Next day. I'm in isolation with that terrible cough. No one near me, and they take samples from my nose and throat. I'm told I'll be in a while yet, and they tell me I've got to go to the dentist as well for a Covid jab tomorrow. Letter arrived hospital saying it's a mix up with a flu jab. Won't have to go it until autumn. I went yesterday, yeah, actually. Told it's dentist today. 17th we've got to now. Still in the lockdown shed and it's a dentist today. They came in with a trolley adjusting my feet upon it and wheeled me along the high street shoving along the pavement as no taxis were available. I loved every minute of it and it, and it was raining. Another appointment for the third but I'll be back home by then. Up early, e eager to get away. I was lay on my bed watching TV, fully dressed after a, a bath and ready for departure with nurses came round escorting me each side to the supermarket. As, as they knew, I was going home. Visually, I pick up what is before me, but they know where they are and the date I... Yeah, this is stuff in the supermarket. I slip by... Start again. It's before me. But they know where they are and its date 
I slipped by they help oh yeah they helped me pick up a good qu uh, qual quality for the 75 pound and back to my home where I worship nurses that I'd known now for such a long uh, while and felt sad when leaving the nurses ac accompanied me in the Argo back home and hearing them in a horrific scream of fear and then laughter I loved it it was an adventure for them yeah we tippled over that bank in Argo it was an adventure for them but me an adventure as well I was going back home and events like this are normal and it goes on for another yeah. day it's just so they come back over here with us, huh? Sorry? So you bought them, the yeah, the so nurses. nurses the nurses. Yeah. 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 They told a bit of experience me for them then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, they, like they a told, band for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they told me that if my cabin wasn't suitable for them, uh, I'd be back inside. Uh, <laughs> really? This, yeah. yeah. Uh, they weren't going to uh, take me uh, to this place and. Uh, well, it's got a nice fire, chairs to sit in and everything. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, there was uh, Alan uh, uh, dr uh, drove us down here. We turned the corner on one at Burns and he had a big thump and it knocked us sideways and we we're going down the bank sideways. And, uh, they don't uh, fall over Argos, don't. But uh, here are all the nurses, uh, two nurses, screaming the red off. <laughs> and then w when we come to a sudden th thud into the burn, then all you get is giggle, giggle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sheer panic and then elation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then we went yeah. uh, uh, into the cabin, then I uh, unlocked it, and they, uh, they come in here and they says, Right, uh, because of what had happened to me in uh, my uh, mind, they says, Can you light that fire? And I sa says, Yeah. So I had to give a demonstration on that. Went through loads of demonstrations. Of uh, various things, yeah. and uh, th th then they said, "Yeah, uh, we'll let you stay." They had to make sure that you, yeah, yeah you're all right. Memory was because that again, UTI you is it it destroys yeah. your brain. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah. yeah to yeah. most people, it's an adventure, isn't it? Certainly is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, certainly is. <laughs> should we, um, should we go get some wood? Yeah. Should we do that? Should we get your wood, mate? Right?